Okay, friends. So the angels kept waking me up and showing me a large group of people who feel really stuck right now. They asked me to create a free three-day online conference. We've never done this before, packed with energy healings, clearings, abundance activations, and teachings, all channeled by the angels, all so that you can enter 2024 feeling renewed, connected, and aligned. Your angels are calling it Angel Fest 2024, and they promise this event is the shift and transformation you've been looking for. Plus, it's absolutely free. Everything will be recorded so you can tune in at your convenience. And here's an exciting bonus. We're offering free readings to five lucky registrants who leave a five-star positive review of this podcast. Don't miss this divine opportunity. Reserve your spot right now at theangelmedium.com backslash free. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And friends, we have a live uh, audience today. We have never done this before, but we have my friend, Radley Valentine on, and also my new friend, uh, Dougal Frazier, who they just created this brand new angelic card deck for all of us to guide us and just bring us into 2024. I'm so excited about this deck. Um, Radley, I've worked with your cards for over a decade, and I've just got a question I want to start the podcast off with, which is um, there's so many decks out there. How do you choose which deck to start with? And, And can you tell us a little bit more about this new deck that you've come out with? Yeah, sure. So I think the first thing to do is to look at the deck and see if it says Radley Valentine on it. And if it does, then you start there. And then if it's Radley Valentine and Dougal Fraser on it, then your, your search is over. You've already found the perfect deck. Um, I think that it depends a whole lot on what it is that you're looking for. Um, I think that um, there's two, two um, avenues that people s- search when they look at decks. They look at either tarot-based decks, which is a a very fixed system of 78 cards, five suits. Um, it, it's it's very set. You can play with it in enormous, magnificent ways with artwork and symbolism and stuff. But in the end, the magician is the magician. Um, and then there are oracle cards, which are free flowing, free form, 100% based on whatever uh, the author wants to create. They can have 12 cards, 44 cards, 72, 16, one, whatever they want. Um, People sometimes get um, a little bit intimidated by tarot. Um, I argue they shouldn't be. I argue that the way they work and Oracle card decks work are exactly 100% ethereally the same, metaphysically the same. Um, uh, One, and there's definitely usually a deeper rabbit hole to fall down into tarot if you want to, but you don't have to. So I think it has to do a lot with, or do you consider yourself a beginner? Do you consider yourself to be more advanced? Um, and in the end, I always say I'm a big proponent of, of uh, brick and mortar uh, bookstores. We really need to support them, keep them in business. If you've got one, go to the store and look at them and go, and, and if you can touch them, hold them. If you don't have that opportunity, then we are blessed with um, Google Images. And so you can type a name in of a deck into, into Google Images and see lots of cards and, and try to get it. But it's an intuitive act, I think. Don't you think, Google? I do. I also, I believe in diversity of Oracle decks. I think it's really important. And I kind of liken it to exercise with your physical body. If you do the same exercise over and over and over again, your body literally stops responding. And for me, it's the same way with Oracle decks. If I use the same images in the same Oracle decks over and over and over again, even though I'm a co-creator of one, my first deck, very exciting. But if I use the same deck over and over and over again, I may not be inspired in the same way. So sitting on my desk right here, I have one, two, three, four, five, I think 
think eight decks, eight different decks that I might pull out according to what I'm drawn to that day. In the same way, when I exercise, I don't use the same equipment every single day because I want to fire different parts of my body. I want my brain to react differently. So Bradley and I are big believers in arms wide open. We have lots of colleagues that have created decks. There are independently published decks out there. There's so many opportunities for you to connect with spirit. Have fun with it. To me, it's like the spice cabinet in your kitchen. The more spices, the better you're cooking. I have a question here too. So in your experience as creators of these decks and your experience with the angels as well, how can you use these card decks to really um, enhance your intuition, enhance your relationship with the angels, maybe even get to know your angels even better? How how does that process work? I like... In in some ways, I need to be careful while I say this. In some ways, um, I think decks can be a little bit like training wheels. Mm. Um, when I teach classes on decks, I usually, and I'm totally like giving away a secret, but it's like at the end of a class, I will usually say, and by the way, you don't need cards to do intuitive work. Mm -hmm. uh, but we as human beings have a tendency to feel insecure about our intuition and, and it's insecure, uncertain about ourselves. Am I making it up? Is it real? Am I getting it right? But we will trust a bunch of pieces of paper with messages and pictures <laughs> on them. <laughs> and, and so um, I think that they are confidence builders. Now, that being said, I still love my decks. I love cards. I don't do a lot of intuitive work without my cards. That's just my methodology. But I can, and I, and I have. But I feel like it gives us the confidence to step into a space where we can do readings for ourselves and for others. We can connect with our angels. We can have that sense of, I've got a little something extra helping me here. Yeah. Do some people that are highly intuitive use it as a validator to come in and be like, okay, I think I'm getting this, but let me pull a card to just check it out? I think so. I mean, back in the day, I remember like the first time I was invited to be on TV, I was told I was not allowed to use tarot cards, that I couldn't bring them on there. And I absolutely panicked about it because I really wanted to believe that the information was coming from the cards. It was like my security blanket. Now, 20 some odd years later, I will pull a card for confirmation for myself. Maybe if I'm reading for someone and the client is deflecting or not agreeing with what I'm saying, I might pull a card and it will confirm it one more time. And I'll say, well, that's interesting because they say you're a warrior in the cards and I'm seeing a warrior. So now we're getting it two times. Um, what I did recently, I didn't have even told Rad this with our deck. I was just abroad doing some private sessions because I, I don't do private sessions as much as usual. And I would give my reading and then in the middle of it, I would have the client pull one card. And so let's say I saw turquoise around someone without them saying anything and then they pulled the card and then they would get turquoise. It was like a double confirmation mm -hmm. because sometimes when an intuitive says they see something around you, it's like, well, I don't really know. Is that really happening? But if you then pull the card and there's a physical, tangible confirmation of the message, you can't make that stuff up. So I see cards as sort of a bridge between worlds for a novice and even for experts. It's just our way to have another moment of confirmation of the messages that we're getting. So one of the things that I've tried to do over the last five years of the podcast is really only bring in topics that I've tried myself, validated myself, so that I can really speak to it um, from that perspective. And I hadn't until about the beginning of this year looked at cards as much um, because my gifts just kind of came in naturally when my dad passed. But Everybody said, there's this woman in Geneva, Illinois. You got to go see her. She's just incredible. And so I went in and I had planned out in my head the way that I wanted 2023 to go. Mm -hmm. And here she is. She pulls the cards and she's like, all right, well, this is going to come in the spring. And then this, you know, opening is going to come here. And then this is going to come over here. And it did unfold exactly as mm -hmm. she said. And I could see as she was reading the cards, she was so highly intuitive herself. She just needed that extra boost of confidence. So I think um, I have just seen 
how magnificent cards can be. One of the things that I've heard people talk about, though, is this fear of getting something negative. And I don't think that there's anything negative in any of your card decks, but just when it comes to decks in general, how can maybe we get over that stigma or that fear? Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because Radley and I have been talking about this a lot lately. So mm-hmm. our deck, Angels and Auras, has shadow messages. And we were so excited about this. And Radley and I would be on Zoom and we're talking about our intention behind it and what we want to do with it. And little did I know that it is a spicy topic for people. So just for anyone listening or watching, a shadow message is when in our deck, if the card presents itself inverted, you are going to see different words from right side up. And I have been a big believer in shadow work for a really, really long time. I look at my shadow all of the time. I like to think of myself as positive and outgoing and and friendly, but I can also be selfish and grumpy and moody and all those things that my shadow presents. So our intention with the shadow message was to remind people that we are human beings, that we do make mistakes, that sometimes our brain operates and or reacts out of fear. So when you get a shadow message, if the card presents itself inverted, this is not a prediction of something terrible to come. We like to think of it as a reflection. It's something to think about. It's to be aware of the humanness and who you are, but it's not a negative message in any way. What do you think, Red? I agree. I I sometimes feel like I have an unfair advantage. I, I really do sometimes because... Um, um, I happen to be quintuple Sagittarius and Sagittarius is literally the astrological sign of faith. Mm. And so between that, that energetic bent and a mother who raised me, that was a person of intense faith in multiple ways. Um, I just have a lot of faith and I work with Archangel Michael Um, Archangel Michael is the Archangel of protection and safety and a whole bunch of other things. I just don't believe that that an Archangel named Michael, whose name literally means he who is like God, does not have the ability to keep us safe and protected in all aspects of our life. Mm. And so when people start to get worried, it's like, well, what if I, you know, it's, it's really in a way it's that whole Ouija board argument that gets overlaid on all kinds of, of, of different uh, divinatory tools. And I'll admit myself, I'm terrified of Ouija boards and maybe that's irrational, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> I uh, loved mine as a kid. I loved I, mine. I was I, like, break I, it out. And I'm not shocked at all. But <laughs> I, I, I just don't believe that it is possible in my work with the angels and my card decks, which are blessed by angels, and any deck. If I pick up a deck from Colette Baron reed I know that source. I know where it came from. I know intimately the person who created it. And even if I didn't know her from Adam, I would still bless that deck before I used it. And I just don't think anything negative, we'll call it that, is going to get past my goal. Yeah. I That's love just that. my belief system. Faith. That's beautiful. Want to hear your spirit team clearly? With 12 brand new courses, my 2024 Archangel membership will cumulatively teach you how to go beyond seeing signs to deciphering spirits' messages for you and open you to abundance in every area of your life. Become an annual paying Archangel member, and I'm giving you two live bonus courses with me and quarterly group mentorship meetings. Members are invited to live recordings of the podcast with some of our top guests. For tons of new perks and special annual discount, use code ANGEL2024. Space is limited. Enrollment is first come, first served. DM me at Angel Podcast with any questions, and you'll hear back personally from my associate, Yvonne, or I. The Angels want to make 2024 your best year yet. Join today only on my website, theangelmedium.com backslash angel membership.
Thank you so much for supporting this show. What about people who, um, we work with so many different people, right? Thousands of people every year, and you just don't know where another person is coming from. And there are some people at times who anchor into the tool too much, maybe, Mm -hmm. and, um, don't really see their own free will in the situation. How do you guide people to say, okay, the tool is there as a tool, but you still have the free will to change and work with the angels and, you know, create the outcomes that you want in this world? Well, I mean, I definitely believe that that the 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 entire concept of spirituality is based on free will. I mean, I, 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 I sometimes get askew with certain religions because they they have this sort of like belief system that if you use your free will, you're going to get punished, which I think just makes God small and puts it in a box. So I have challenges with that. But um, I, the other side of Sag for me is also optimism. It's intense optimism. And it's like, I just don't believe that anybody is trapped. I do believe that we can be in a space where we feel trapped. And I do believe that the universe loves us with such intensity and such full on enthusiasm that if we are determined to stay on a negative path, the universe will make you quite miserable Mm -hmm. as a way to get you to turn around. What do you think, Dube? You know, earlier in my life, I was obsessed with the concept of predicting the future. And I really believed that everything was written in stone. I would go to channelers who would tell me that, that they could see my future mapped out 100%. And what I've come to understand is that I'm a sexual abuse survivor. I had a very challenging upbringing. And so my obsession with predicting the future was really about preventing pain. It was kind of a trauma response in some ways. If I could protect the future, I can protect my friends and my family and clients and strangers and all of these things. And what I've come to know is that intuitive work for me is more about empowering people with knowledge and wisdom to handle anything that comes their way. There are patterns of energy that repeat themselves. There are cycles of energy that repeat themselves. My meeting, my husband, I think was predestined and divine, but whether I go to Trader Joe's or to Ralph's later, that is not. And I don't need to use a tarot card or a pendulum to make that decision. I can you just don't? live my I don't. <laughs> But I used to do that. I mean, I used to literally, this is not a joke, use a pendulum and be like, Taco Bell, we're okay with this today, right? Like that's how obsessed I was with it. And (laughs) this was a trauma response. I was trying to protect myself from pain. Yeah. And and I think that's such a beautiful answer that we needed to hear today. So thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I can't wait to dive into this deck. I don't know if you can show it for those who are watching on YouTube. And um, and can we pick some some people in the audience and we'll just do little readings here? Absolutely. Awesome. So I don't know if you just want to go where the energy is calling you. You want to start, Red? Well, let me just make sure. Is there anybody who does not want to be called upon? Because I don't, I don't, I'm not into pushed readings. So <laughs> don't want to be called upon. Okay, no one's raising their hand. So I'm just gonna go to autumn because I'm just drawn there. So good. How are you? Hi, how are you today? Hmm. I'm doing pretty well. Pretty well. This oh, is exciting. I have a ton of your decks as well. So So do you have a particular question? Do you just want us to pull a card? What would you like? Okay. So I'll just pull a card. I'll pull one. Let's leave it in uh, spirits hands. I just have to say, so Autumn, immediately when I hear your voice, I see green and I see like multiple shades of green. So green for me is about communication and creativity. It's the way you express yourself. You are a tremendous communicator. You are a good communicator. If there is a conversation that does not feel authentic and real, you get uncomfortable, you get jittery, you get itchy. 
I enjoy you because you will ask a question that may be too deep for people. It's like you want to go to that deep space. So communication is really, really important to you. What's interesting is that I pulled two cards that are also about communication. We got renewed connections. Renewed Connections is all about mediumship, so I'm not quite sure if you've done any mediumship before, but this is about the different ways that spirit can connect with you. And then I also, two cards fell out at the same time. You also got everything's going to be okay. Autumn, people come to you when they're stressed. People come to you for reassurance. You tell them that everything's going to be okay. You are a communicator from the divine perspective. It's what you are so, so good at. And people are listening to you now. There was a period of time where people weren't really listening to you. And I feel like now they get it. They hear you. They see you. Well done. Sorry, I'm talking quickly. I've had coffee. Radley, your turn. And Riley doesn't drink caffeine. So, <laughs> no there. so I pulled a card with a blonde lady dressed in green. Mm-hmm. So, so, <laughs> just for <fun. laughs> so it's this card's called career Do transition. We? It comes in green and orange. So we've already sort of uh, identified that the card talks about change and excitement and opportunity and advancement. And so this is a, we designed this card to be this woman who's basically like sort of like walking out of one environment into an environment that is more metaphysical, spiritually based. Since we've got angels over here and she's literally stepping from one doorway into another doorway. And so this card shows up, it's often when it's career, but it can be any kind of transition in your life where you're literally saying, bye bye old life, hello new life. Mm. I love that. Oh my goodness. That was so spot on. I'm actually, I am a medium. I'm on Julie's wellness team. So I'm a part of all of um, everything angelic that she does. So that was a spot on reading and I really enjoyed it. And I'm very thankful. Yeah, and I just hired Autumn on for a a bigger part in the business. Um, She's going to be helping me with, and that was just yesterday we had that conversation. So yeah, that's amazing. Awesome. I love that. Okay. Let's go to Norma. Norma, say your name three times for me. Oh, say your name three times for me. um, Just a general card is cool. Norma. I I was getting this correctly. So immediately I see orange. So orange happens to be one of my favorite colors. It's depicted behind me over there. It's the color of balance and perception. It is also the color of the life coach and the natural intuitive. You are in- extremely intuitive. You are the stranger on a plane where someone next to you is like, and now I'm going to tell you all about my divorce and what's been going on in the past six months because you make me feel safe and you make me feel comfortable. So your ability as an empath is off the charts. Sometimes, Norma, if I may say, you do lose yourself in that energy. So one of the things the universe is asking you to work on right now is organization of your energy. You connect with people really easy, but you want to make sure that you're not connecting. And then if you do private sessions, like time going too long or losing track of time, or you got to pull yourself back in. So anything you can do to ground is imperative. I'm not joking when I say this, go out and hug a tree, planting, soil, (laughs) getting into that energy. But there is a lot of um, orange energy around you. Now, the car that I picked is the peace card, which was inverted. Shadow message, dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, The shadow message is untethered, which we just talked about, disconnected, vulnerable, and unaware. Here's the thing. You are such an empath that you deeply go into that person's experience and you become untethered. So right now we are mastering how to get into that peaceful state without losing yourself. I love your conviction. Your conviction is incredible. If there is someone in need, you are up at 4 a.m. But I do think you're practicing declining energy invitations. You don't have to say yes all the time. So out of 12 energy invitations a day, I'd say yes to about eight just to help ground you a little bit more. Okay, go ahead, Red. Yeah, so I got don't compromise, which I think matches exactly. It also comes in the colors of orange and red. So here Mm -hmm. we have the orange. It's back again. Uh, Red is a color, as I've learned from Dougal, that's about emotions, and it is from becoming from the heart. Hence the reason that we came up with the, the symbolism that we came up with. This card says boundaries and assertiveness and courage and being unwavering, which totally balances into, I think, what Dougal was talking about, about the need to 
not compromise with your boundaries, to not allow yourself to be giving more than you're anticipating. And boundaries has been a real problem for me. Shut up, Dougal. And so <laughs> I, and I'm really working on that. I've come a long way in 2023. And in fact, I have two words for 2024. They are balance and boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that you have those, especially as a, as a, a big time empath, that you've got that place where you go, I give this this much and I give no more. Yeah. Any dizziness, Norma? Are you having dizziness? I have yeah, been so a little bit lately. That yes. That's literally yeah. and, uh, what uh, I'm saying. I'm untethered right now. I'm ungrounded. So we really want to respect that. And anything with soil, like literally touching soil, plants in your space, anything to really ground, I think is important right now. I'm also um, one of on Julie's wellness team as well. I am a psychic medium and everything you both said was spot on. I have a tendency to sometimes go a little bit over, over in readings because I just want to give them so much, you know, help and guidance. So um, that, so can we talk, can we talk about this too? Because I, I think this is a good teaching tool for people. Myself in the I sessions, used to, and I would present that as if I was doing a good thing. For anybody listening or watching that's a facilitator, when you tell your client that the session is 45 minutes or 60 minutes and you end at that time, you're modeling behavior for them. And we've all heard of like the doorknob confession where the last question is like, and by the way, I'm thinking of leaving my wife. And you're like, I just told you we have three minutes. And this is the question that you've all, we've all, we've all had that moment before. What do you call that? The doorknob moment? It's called a doorknob confession in the world of doorknob psychology. confession. Right? Where like your client for 40 before. minutes has been like, everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's great. No, by the way, I have a shopping addiction. And you're like, we should have started with the shopping addiction. So when we end the session, you're managing your own energy, but you're also modeling behavior for them. And it's okay to say, hey, I wish we had gotten to this 20 minutes ago, or we have to stop now because I'm bringing the energy in. So see it as a tool, as teaching, as much as it is for your own energy management at the same time. Sure. Thanks Thank so you so much for that. Thank you sure. both. I you really appreciate it. Confession. And by the way, I've done that to like 8,000 therapists before. <laughs> so maybe seen? I'm just more familiar with it. <laughs> no, I've never done that. And I've never even heard of it. But I, but it makes total sense. But no, I have not heard of that. So now that's a new thing on my little list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anyway, so, um, hey, Alexa. Oops. <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> Your name just became Alyssa for the rest of this time that you were right now, okay? Perfect. All right. So what's up? <clears throat> Good, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good. Uh, you can pick randomly. But before I even, I well, I've already pulled sure. a card. Before I even pull a card, though, it's like one of the archangels that came for me for you right away was Gabriel. And I, Gabriel is, I love Gabriel. Gabriel is this archangel that is the archangel of communication, of creativity, and motivation. And so it's a really powerful angel. It's um, Gabriel is very well loved at this particular time of year uh, because uh, Gabriel is said to be the archangel of the Annunciation, and that's where the creativity part comes from. But I pulled a card that was a different archangel, and it is Uriel. Now, for anyone that studies with me, Uriel is an archangel that comes in golden glitter and is the archangel that is largely about um, epiphanies, life transformation, and emotional healing. However, in another system, Archangel Uriel comes in the color red. And when Dougal and I were working on this deck, what we found was that both gold and red were, were in alignment with Uriel. And so we just went ahead and went both directions. And so this card talks about emotions and healing and devotions and integration. And so working with Uriel for those kinds of things. So you've got Uriel and Gabriel. These are the two archangels that I work with the most personally, that and Michael. Um, so two archangels for you to be thinking about if you are looking into those issues in your life, Dougal. So Alexa, the first color that comes up is a really soft pink, which we know is also connected to Jophiel. 
The other thing that came through, what I heard was that you're very protected, like your energy field. So I don't know if that's something that you work on, but protection. And I also got the sense um, energetically that I needed to like, not proceed with caution, but like slowly connect with your energy. I don't want to use the word guard, but it does feel like there's a little bit of protection up. What's interesting to me is that the card that I picked was turquoise and sandal yeah. font. Yeah. So turquoise for me is the color of forgiveness. I don't want to go into this deeply, Alexa, because this is, you know, a podcast and we don't need to put all your personal stuff up here. But I do feel like there's been some betrayal. You are extremely kind. You are very committed. You show up for people. You follow through. You believe people to the core of your being. And I do feel a little bit startled that someone did not follow through in a way that was very unexpected. And that just is not who you are. So when it happens, it, it's jarring on a level that is hard to explain. I mean, your central nervous system just feels like it is really on high alert to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Turquoise is a powerful color for me. I talked earlier about being a sexual abuse survivor. It came to me at a time when I had to rise so high above something, something that was so challenging and so confusing, I had to go to a divine perspective to just understand what was going on. The universe was just saying, make sure she knows she's safe. Make sure she knows that everything's okay. Make sure she knows that she's protected. You don't have to worry so much about protecting other people. And I could be wrong, but if you have been rattled, if, if I'm right about this, if it, if it is core, this thing that we're talking about, if I may say it's a teaching tool, it's so that you can understand other people on such a, such a deep level, because the way you're managing and navigating your energy right now is so brave and heroic and beautiful and lovely. And I'm just, I know we don't know, I don't know you, but I'm very impressed with how you're handling everything. You've got this and it's going to be okay. That's just kind of what comes through for me. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm going to cry. Yeah, that was right on. Now I feel like I'm going to cry. Yeah, and <laughs> I often... No one cries alone with Dougal. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like, yeah, I'm navigating like at the front of a boat and you're not going doing it alone. Storm, it may so. feel like you're doing it alone sometimes, but you are not. And you are a pioneer and you are a warrior. And sometimes someone has to walk through the door first. And if you're the one to do it, then lead people because your heart is open and it's really beautiful. And I'm absolutely certain you have got this. Sure. Well, let's just oh, everybody so take much. a just a one second and just send Alexa some loving, positive energy. Surround her with those angels so you could just feel their presence. I feel your dad with you right now, too. Yeah. Oh, thank you for being here. I want to keep going with the the readings um this is just so fun is everybody just having so much fun i hope we we all get this deck tomorrow um dougal uh do you want to start next first uh yeah let's see Let me... all right i'm gonna go to angela do you mind starting red no i don't mind oh, sure. i'm just trying to find who is who we're talking about angela Oh, Angela, yeah. got it. See her. I see her. Okay. Um, Hi. Hello. There you are. I, um, I am just ready for any, any mm, random. Never a random card. card. Would be great. <laughs> which is a great book title or blog title yeah <laughs> the card. Okay, we'll pitch that. yeah <laughs> okay so the card that i pulled for you is actually one of my favorites in the deck um when we were going through the process of creating the deck um there were just certain cards that we got like all oh, excited about when the idea would come front th through for us and this was one of them and the card is called blessings in disguise mm. And, and so what we have here is we've got this young lady and she had a balloon and she was pretty excited about the balloon, but the balloon went, right? It popped. 
But look what happened. A party happened because inside the balloon was all this confetti and all this magical stuff and a white feather from the angels. Uh, this card is number 16. I love that because it's one plus six is seven. Seven tells us that we are on the right path. That is one of the things that the number seven means in angel numbers. And so the card talks about trust and revelation and significance and surprise. And I love this card because I believe that even in the most challenging of times, even when things seem really rough and difficult and even awful, there is a blessing in every single thing. We just don't necessarily see it. For me personally, 2023 kind of sucked. It was like really a terrible year. I hated it. It was so hard on me in so many ways. And now I'm sitting here. Uh, it's December 7th. The year's almost over. And I'm looking back at 2023 and going, you know what? I am so glad all of that happened because of the person that I'm coming out the other side of. Wouldn't want to do it again. Don't want to go relive it. But I can now look at all of that and go, blessings in disguise. Mm. Blessings in disguise. And so um, Archangel Shamuel, it's C-H-A-M-U-E-L. Uh, I see as pale green. Some people see as pink. This color, this card happens to be white and pink as its colors. But Shamuel is an archangel whose name means the eyes of God. And Shamuel helps us find personal peace and helps us to be able to see in any given moment what it is that we need to see or find. So Shamuel is a good archangel for you. What do you got, Duo? So Angela, the first color that I, um, card that I picked for you was Uriel again, but this time gold. So Rad was talking earlier about Uriel being good with epiphanies and ideas and all these things, but Uriel is inverted in this moment. So the words in the card inverted are imbalanced, workaholic, detached, and sacrifice. So from an aura perspective, gold is usually about self-employment. Angela, you are supposed to be self-employed, but there is a chance there is another job or somebody else's vision that is taking too much time off of, of your own energy. So you support people, you do that naturally, that's wonderful, but we do want to step into your vision, what you're trying to create, what you want to do. Gold is a fiercely independent color, so it's also the reminder that you can do things on your own. When I heard your voice, I saw purple, but pops of purple. It was not consistent purple. Purple is the color of leadership. It's the color of destiny. If a color pops, if it's not consistent, we're hesitating a little bit. So if you're considering being self-employed, if you're thinking of stepping into that, if you're thinking of turning the volume up, grab it. Go for it. Don't question it. Don't analyze. You love to analyze, Angela. Go over it 47 times. It's your favorite thing to do. <laughs> analyze. What do you do professionally? But you yeah. don't know. You can just step into it. Um, I'm kind of between right now. I was in the medical field for the longest time, and I, I'm still halfway in it because I'm working part-time, and then I'm also working at, um, within a school. Um, in elementary school, helping out in the special is education your, department. Is your goal to be self-employed? I am going to I would to love be. to be, yes. I would yeah, encourage yes. you to make so, the affirmation. The challenging thing with gold is gold people rise to the occasion. They're hard workers. They get things done. They get, get things done. They're not lazy people. Getting a gold person to like change and focus on something else can be a little bit challenging. So my advice is take all of that energy that you dedicate to somebody else's vision, any job you've ever had, any task that's at hand, and really invest that in you because you deserve it. Um, and so self-employment, this is a great example going back to Julie's question earlier. So for Angela, self-employment feels like a possibility to me. Am I certain she's going to become self-employed this lifetime? Not sure. Do I think it would make her happy and carefree and feel fantastic? Absolutely. So I'm encouraging her, but it's ultimately up to Andrew. Thank you. Yeah, that is 100%. So Everything you said is true. <laughs> That's kind of what I've been working on myself, trying to make myself focus more on me and what I want as opposed to what others want for me or what I've been focusing on other people. 
helping yeah, them. Absolutely. I have a quick question for Radley. Thank you so much. And Dougal. When it comes to the new year, are you getting any sense? Because we're in December here, almost second week of December and 2024. Has anything been coming in for you of, hey, here's what the other side is really asking us to focus on in 2024? I, I've, I have such high hopes for 2024. I mean, it's like, first of all, it's an eight year, two plus two plus four is an eight and eight is such a successful number. It's, it's, it's really a, it's a super beloved number in, in Japanese culture for Dougal. I think, I think eights are big numbers over there. Um, um, but it's, I just am seeing eight as being like this, or 2024 as being this num this year where it's like finally we start to have some traction. Mm -hmm. Finally, we've got a lot of really challenging astrological attributions that have been haunting us for years now. Some of those are starting to clear up. Um, some of the Saturn influences are starting to like at least calm down, and Saturn can be so constricting and restrictive and. And so I feel like 2024 feels to me like a breath of fresh air, like it's a relief, like, it, like it's like, okay, even if it just felt like a normal year, think about what a relief it would be for it to just be a normal year, what even, whatever even normal <laughs> is anymore. That would what be the biggest blessing, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> totally. What about you, Dougal? So I don't know, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to separate, you know, a, a universal message from just something that I'm working on my on my own. But what comes for me is like the real need for compassion and understanding right now. I mean, I just feel like I can't step out my front door without there being confusion or um, belittling or, you know, um, heaviness in some way. And so my intention for the next year is to really focus on compassion and understanding and connecting with people and the movement and the flow of energy in every single way. Um, and I think the planet needs that. Um, I think quite literally, you know, Mother Earth needs that. I think our hearts need that. And so the opportunity for compassion and understanding, I think, is going to be prevalent everywhere. Again, free will, whether we step into that is really our own choice. I hope we do. Uh, collectively, we can try. But let's just try to listen to each other. Let's just try to understand each other. I love that. That's beautiful. If you guys are willing, I think we have time for just one or two more. And then um, I want to show the card deck one more time to everybody on YouTube so that we we know where to get it. Cool. Uh, you want to pick one more person, quick, Brad? Um, sure. Um, Christina. Hi, how you doing? Hi. Good, thanks. I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, yeah, I'm open to whatever. Christina, you also have to... gold, but it's a little bit know. closer to you, which leads me to believe you are self-employed, correct? Um, sort of. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Repeat that question. <laughs> well, that one 100% well. counts as self-employed. The color of the manager. So gold <laughs> is the color of independence, is that they want to create energy for people. One of the things that I want to tell you, Christine, is that whenever you've had a vision in your lifetime, you've made it come true. It has manifested for you. Manifesting isn't something that you need to learn. It comes very, very naturally to you. So you can dream big. You can expand if you want to do more. Gold people tend to manifest a business that is not necessarily born out of passion, but is successful and does incredibly well. So the universe is going to provide for you in a way that you might feel surprised. It may feel very traditional, but it's successful and it's prosperous and it's abundant. It is a color of independence again. Did you have to become very independent from a young age? Who is that cutie? Yeah. So independent comes real independence uh, comes yes. really naturally to you. One of the things that I want to remind you is that you are not in survival mode anymore. Things are okay. You've got wiggle room. There was a period of time where you were in survival mode and like, I just have to get this stuff done. That's not where we are right now. You can dream a bigger dream. You've got wiggle room. You can be more creative with it if you want to, but it's a great, great year for you financially, specifically connected to real estate. Do you have investment property? Um, sort of. We, well, we have, um, 
We bought a house recently, and uh, we have tenants downstairs. Um, but I want you to yeah. watch this replay. <laughs> I okay. asked you if you were self-employed. You were like, sort of. <laughs> I asked you if you had um, investment property. Sort of. We have a rental house with tenants. I really Steve, want you property. to embrace what so you So here's created. what I want you to do. Your brain and your soul have a disconnect. Your soul knows everything's good. Your soul knows that you're expanding. Your soul knows that you're abundant. But your brain is like, are we? So we want to let the soul take the lead. Yeah, this, you can right. do this. You are making things happen. You are secure. It is continuing to build and grow. So let's own it. Yeah, I'm self-employed. We have investment property. I'm planning on doing more. You can be in your power and be in your light without taking light away from anybody else. So I pulled you a card and it's Haniel Silver. Haniel Silver. So this card talks about goddess energy, psychicness, sacredness, being proud. Haniel is this archangel that is um, the grace of God and is the archangel that helps us with our intuitive gifts. Uh, she's very much into to women's issues and things along those nature. But if you're working on your, your spiritual gifts, your divine intuition, those kinds of things, Haniel is one of the archangels, one of two that are really intensely about that. And sort of like, in a way like what Dougal was talking about, she's very much about feminine power mm -hmm. and being empowered and owning your power. And, and so maybe part of what Dougal was saying about the whole thing of sort of kind of, maybe sort of kind of needs to know, needs to sort of kind of not be in your vocabulary <laughs> right now. Maybe it needs to be more Louise Hay style affirmations of this is what I want. And this is what I'm bringing forth. Yeah. This is who I am. And, and then working with Haniel on that particular particular issue. Totally agree. Awesome. Thank you. It's definitely been a challenge, but something um, just that's been on my mind a lot. So Pleasure. yeah. Thanks, Christina. Thank you we so have much. Time for just one more and then we'll wrap up. Sure. Dougal, your turn. Well, I feel like we should go to Zoom user. I was going to do Zoom user too, but I didn't know the name. I was like, what do, how do I say Zoom user? Do we call her Zoomy? Does she know she's Zoom user? I think she knows. Okay. I did not know. My as long name as your name there, is sorry. Zoom and your last name is user, your name is there. <laughs> I feel like I have a sticker that says over 55 Zoom user. Yeah. <laughs> uh, still shuffling. Hold on. I got it. All right. So uh, so we end where we started. Career wow. transition. Okay. Career transition. Again, this card is green and orange, I think. Yep. Green and orange. Um, it's a 17. So one plus seven is eight. So successful, abundance, prosperity. Uh, the card talks about change, excitement, opportunities, and advancement. Again, this is the woman that is walking from one doorway in through another doorway, ready for a change, ready to leave behind this, heading into that. People who follow me know that I am actually a recovering certified public accountant. I was an accountant <laughs> for 20 years. So this could have been me, you know, well, actually at this point, 20 years ago, where I walked out of that door into this door that was the door of the angels. So when we are in a time of change and transition, in our lives when we're ready to have the, make those things happen. It's a really great card to work with Uriel with because he is the Archangel of Life Transformation. That's interesting because you got a core card. So the core cards have one color. We got Zadkiel here. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Zadkiel here. So we have purple. Anytime purple comes up in a reading when it comes to the aura, it means you are on the right path. You are doing exactly what you're supposed to do. It may not be happening in the speed in which you expected. There may be speed bumps and that's okay, but you are doing exactly what you were supposed to do. Based on what Rad was talking about with the career transition, I really think this is all about stepping into your power. You're loyal. You get things done, all are great attributes, but I do think it's time to sort of level up a little bit and focus a little bit more on yourself. 
in this next year, you are going to be making decisions to focus on your voice and not everybody in your circle is going to love that. That is your soul group showing you who is really there and who really isn't a member of your soul group. Your soul group is going to say, yay, Zoom user. I don't know your name. Yay, Zoom user. You do it. I want you to follow through, make this happen. And some people are going to say, but you're not here for me in the same way. And how could you do this? And who do you think you are? Those kinds of things. We want to ignore those messages. Step into your power. Step into that purple energy. You can do it. Yeah. People don't like it when we change. Yep. Well, I laugh because I don't know if you can see car. this. Well, this has been my yes, screensaver the card. Cover. The purple oh, I love the guardian angel messages cards. Yeah. Sitting right here because it's one of my, the most powerful cards that I relate what to you with. And it was sitting right here. I'm like, oh, purple. That. Yes, it's right there. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's absolutely on point and, and good to hear. Thank you so much. Okay. And many Joanne is my name. Sorry. Joanne. Oh. Okay, nice to meet you. Love Joanne. it. Joanne Zoom user. Bradley and Dougal, <laughs> this has been amazing. Your new deck, Angels and Auras, are out everywhere. I want both of you to um, go one at a time and tell everybody where we can find you personally and follow you over on Instagram, your website. But I also want to just maybe leave uh, the listeners with one more answer to a question, which is when you started working with angels, did you feel like you started working with them all at once or do you feel like the angels started stepping in one at a time in order for you to really get to know them more personally for me it was it was it definitely it started with guardian angels it started which to me is like starting at home right it's like that's as it started there. And then the next one was Uriel to pop in. And I was really very singularly focused for a long time on that. And then as I developed, I started pulling in each and one, each one. And really over the last couple of years, my relationships with all of the archangels have very much been incredibly enhanced because I really started in earnest channeling specific archangels and that had a lot to do with my relationship mm. it's beautiful for me it was a little bit different you know i feel like radley set me on blind angel dates um angels were not a body of work that i had worked i've been studying metaphysics since i was eight years old but it just wasn't a body of work that i was familiar with and when radley and i become friends if you're friends with rad and you say oh i'm in traffic rad will text you sending you this angel or I'm struggling with this. And they'll say, well, now I want you to work with Raphael or may introduce you to Michael. So it was all like blind dating for me. And so I was sort of introduced to them through Radley and, and realized for me working with angels when Radley explained to me that you have to invite and ask the angels to be a part of your process was a big knowing for me. I struggle asking for help. So knowing that I could say to the universe, I need help with this and call upon someone specific was really, really powerful. And I owe all of that to Rat. Well, and mm -hmm. I would even say speed dating. <laughs> it was really kind of speed dating. Deal. And you know what's fun with the angels? They were all matches for me. You know, on speed dating, you have to say who's them, and they all match, right. which was fun. Yeah, it's all match. That's amazing. So, your new deck, where can everybody find it and where can they find you? So, for me, um, it's radleyvalentine.com. That's the beginning and end. You'll find me on the major. Uh, social platforms. We also have a website called aaoracle.com where you can, if you want to go explore the deck more, and you can also, if you buy the deck, you can get get a whole bunch of free stuff and that's still out there, aaoracle.com. And I just have to say, Brad's being um, um, polite, but we just went into our second printing already, which is so exciting. In less than two months, we went into our second printing. And it was so a big printing, the first one. It was one. a big Maybe. printing, which is really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, and again, you can find us on all the things. And I agree, AA Oracle for all of the information about the deck. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here and offering us your time. And these beautiful readings today can just feel the warmth in our community and just how much you've touched everybody's hearts. Oh, thanks, Julie. I appreciate the invitation. And so nice to meet everybody. All my love friends. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. Friends, let's end today's episode with a prayer. Dear God, as we stand here at the threshold of a new year, 
We come to you humble in gratitude and hopeful in our hearts. We ask you to bless this world and every person in it with your endless love and abundance. We call upon your angels to extend their wings over every soul. May they touch every life, bringing healing where there is pain, strength where there is weakness, and infinite abundance in every area of every life. In this time of global reflection and anticipation, we pray earnestly for peace, peace within our own hearts, peace within our homes, peace across every land. Let hope rise and let love prevail, binding us in our shared humanity and interconnectedness. We ask for special care and protection for the children of our world. May they grow in a nurturing environment, shielded from harm and surrounded by care. Their laughter and their dreams are the seeds of a promising future. And we ask that each are blessed with every opportunity to thrive. God, guide us to be creators of our own harmonious world. Help us to become beacons of your energy and spread your love now and always. As we step into this next chapter of our lives, empower us to live in alignment with our soul. Find joy in each moment and embrace the beauty of life's journey. May we each walk in confidence and faith knowing that with your divine guidance, anything is possible. May our hearts overflow with gratitude and our minds be filled with positive, loving thoughts. In this spirit of optimism and renewal, we step boldly into our future, ready to create, love, and thrive. In this we pray, amen. Friends, if you'd like to support this podcast, book a session with me or join my Angel Reiki School, where I'll help you develop all of your unique spiritual gifts and use them to serve. Visit theangelmedium.com or use the link in the show notes to book a discovery call with me personally. Thank you for being here. I love you.